the story. The situational comedy or sitcom, as we refer to this type of show, was one of the first forms of television to come into play in the post-World War II early years of television. Its general format sticks to the features of a 30-minute length, use of humor and a laugh track, and recording in front of a live audience. These features have remained the same ever since its emergence in the 1940s. Another key attribute of sitcom is each episode's progression toward a conflict resolution. Each episode ends with the restoration of the equilibrium established during the opening credits. Therefore, sitcoms exist within boundaries, and yet there have also been significant commentaries made through sitcom. At the heart of sitcom has always been a representation of American ideals of the nuclear family. However, the form has been expanded upon to comment on different arenas of American life that exist outside of the home, and the form has also become infused with political and social messages. Sitcom has always balanced a fine line between showing American ideals while simultaneously mocking the notion of an ideal at all. Take for example one of television's first sitcoms, and certainly the most successful, I Love Lucy. When casting the real-life couple of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, CBS executives at first objected to Arnaz playing Ball's husband on the show because they said no one would believe he was your husband. To which Ball responded, why not? We're married. Excuse me, Mr. P. Yes, ma'am. Have the Cubans the different beats? If they have, will you teach me to chick, chick, chicky boom, chick, chicky boom? See, si, senorita, I know that you will like the chicky boom, chick. Yeah. In the 1970s, in the wake of the counterculture, several politically conscious sitcoms were popularized. A notable example is All in the Family, which premiered in April 1971 and introduced the world to Archie Bunker, patriarch of a Queens-based working-class family. Historian Doyle Green has written on Archie Bunker, saying that he was designed to satirize the right by proclaiming the infinite wisdom of Richard Nixon and routinely denouncing minorities, feminists, and know-it-all liberals. But in this comedic portrayal of a conservative, Green also notes, some viewers watched because they enjoyed hearing Archie Bunker rage against all things un-American. Can somebody translate what I'm saying for this speak here? It's not necessary, mister. This is speak, speak English. The scholarship on sitcom is relatively sparse, and the field is only beginning to be taken seriously by film as well as cultural studies experts. Analogous to the underrepresentation of the art form in fields of study, Latinxes have always and remain underrepresented in television. 5.8% of named characters on television shows and movies are Latino, and that's relative to, I think, 17% of the population as a whole, and so those numbers don't match up, right? Since the 1970s, as the landscape of television and the demographics of our nation have changed, to a certain extent, so have the portrayal of Latinxes in sitcom. In 1989, Mario Lopez was cast as the lead male in Saved by the Bell for a role originally intended for a white character. George Lopez's 2002 sitcom on Nickelodeon became the most successful sitcom to be centered on a Latino family. April Ludgate was one of the most beloved characters on the NBC sitcom Parks and Recreation, who constantly nodded to her Cuban heritage. According to a 2017 LA Times article, these stereotypes can more or less be categorized into four different tropes. The first is the spicy sex pot, famously exemplified through Sofia Vergara in her character of Gloria from Modern Family. The second stereotype is the maid, and the third is the gangbanger, seen in the hit Netflix show Orange is the New Black. Every week, you're going to bring your homework. And if you don't, I will make your life a living hell, even from in here. Try me. I call my brothers from Washington Heights, and they will hang your ass over that bridge until you piss on yourself, and it comes running down your body into your mouth. That's the kind of shit they live for. The Spanish-only speaker is the fourth and final on the list of stereotypes in Hollywood. Though these characters are often portrayed as speaking one language, we know in real life this is not often the case for many Latinxes. Actresses like Gina Rodriguez work to combat the stereotype in her sitcom, Jane the Virgin. Right, the domestic worker, the gangster, like these are the, the, the Latin lover, like these are the stereotypical representations of Latinidad that we get. And Jane the Virgin is certainly in conversation with those um, in that she's a waitress. Right, and her grandmother is a caregiver for seniors. Um, and so it's not denying that these are actual jobs that tend to be, um, you know, 
these are, this is work that's done by Latinos in the United States, but it's not suggesting that these are limiting jobs, right? right? These characters still have interiority, they're still interesting, they still develop, they grow. Hey, I'm just, you know, so how should we counter these stereotypes, and what are their implications? Combating stereotypes of Latinx so people in sitcoms often begins with casting. I mean, I've dated before, it is important to cast day. Latinxes into authentic um, roles in which they can help um, to tell a story they are right, a part of. However, oftentimes the responsibility Perfect falls on the actors, Friday, and Latinxes are forced to turn down jobs because of the ways in which they would be portrayed. Jeez. Additionally, Hispanics represent a wide range of diverse I mean, ethnic groups that it. have culturally distinct traits, but are often lumped into one category, Latino. Crying again. Sitcoms yeah, which produce yeah, yeah. positive Don't images of Latin exes can help to dispel yeah. stereotypes. For example, there is often the stereotype that Latin exes are part of big families. The George Lopez show so helps to dispel the stereotype by portraying a Latino family with only two children. Additionally, by having the characters speak predominantly English, the George Lopez show combats the stereotype that Latin exes only speak English. Jane the Virgin works to combat the stereotype that Latin exes are lazy and uneducated by showing Jane's commitment to education and hard work in her several jobs. Additionally, sitcoms often use self-deprecating jokes to mock stereotypes. In the George Lopez show, when George refers to his mother as a big Mexican hillbilly, Sofia Vergara is Gloria from Modern Family says that she is comfortable in the role she plays and feels like she is able to channel her mother in her role as opposed to simply representing a stereotype. You try speaking in another language, everybody out of my house! Sometimes, the positive images of Latinxes represented on sitcoms can also have a detrimental effect. Oops. Sitcoms that portray Latinxes without displaying Latino you culture looked. are often accused Ow. of being whitewashed. Additionally, the elevation of middle-class Hispanics now in sitcoms could potentially lead to aggression towards poor America. Hispanics who do not fit this new image of the educated middle-class Hispanic. After taking this opportunity to dive deeper into the portrayal of Latinxes in sitcoms, we have found that there will always be a differing of opinions, from the actors and actresses who portray these characters themselves to the different audiences that watch the sitcoms. Negative stereotypes are still prevalent. However, with effective response from those in Hollywood willing to break the mold, we are optimistic that a more accurate representation of Latinx characters will continue to be featured in sitcoms. And in being concerned with more accurate representation of Latinx characters in sitcom, we have to think about what roles do we as fans and consumers of situational comedy play. How do we as consumers participate in that kind of change as well? And so I don't know exactly what that means in the age of binge watching television on Netflix, but it's worth thinking about the kinds of shows that we support, what we're interested in, in consuming, what being a fan means. Like, uh, Having been dismissed as mindless television with banal and unintelligent humor, the situational comedy has been largely overlooked as a media form and its consumers not closely considered. However, if representation of Latin exes or any minorities is to be improved, audiences must be anything but mindless and instead work in tandem with the mold breakers in Hollywood for more consistent and more accurate portrayals of Latin exes. In improving the ways Latinxes are situated in the narratives of sitcom, we believe that this work is simultaneously improving the ways that Latinxes are inserted into the narrative of America as a nation. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold, like their mother, the youngest one in curls. It's the story of a man named Brady who was busy with three boys of his own. They were four men living all together, yet they were all alone. Till the one day when the lady met this fellow, and they knew that it was much more than a hunch, that this group must somehow form a family. That's the way they all became the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch.